A2 suspicion. While the expert spiritualists advocate going straight to the source, or God or Sheila or whatever the fuck you want to call that big energy thingy beyond around within us, the suspicion we reserve, whether it be overt or hip pocketed, for things unseen is always, and I mean always, within us. Suspicion is the very thing we need for survival on this planet, and it ain't never going to go away, nor should it. Suspicion gives us the edge against all those little landmines that make up our journey. It gives us an ability to make choices, create detours if necessary, escape from unpleasant situations, and choose the right book, such as this one, from which to gather the kind of information that we need to ride our wave in the best way possible. Ingrained as it is so deeply within our primal beings, suspicion is the very reason that so often such magnetic tools as affirmations and feng shui fail to deliver. In fact, very often, an unconsciously oppositely energized affirmation or physical adjustment to your environment can have the result you didn't want. And I'll be talking a whole load about that one in a minute. For those of you who have been assiduously avoiding any kind of new age crap, affirmations are the things you seriously say to yourself in front of the mirror in a valiant but vain attempt at reprogramming your subconscious. Feng Shui, apparently pronounced Feng Shui, but who really freaking knows, has a much longer history with billions of Chinese around the world and now you and me and the Pope, well, maybe not the Pope, believing that the placement of certain objects and the physical configuration of your home or work environment can seriously affect your luck. This can lead to serious errors in decorative judgment with the super anxious energy surrounding those placements doing exactly the opposite to what you hoped they do. So you've been diligently practicing Feng Shui, or whatever seemingly slightly silly practice has been recommended to you, so you can change your life for the better, and things just keep spiraling down the plug hole. Then you proclaim Feng Shui, or whatever, is a bunch of shite, while desperately hoping you're wrong about that. And now you read this book and it says your affirmations are probably having the opposite effect than intended. Now you've gone and slammed this idea in my head that this stuff's never going to work, you cry. I'm always going to feel like, no matter how much I affirm, it's all going to fail. Thanks a lot. You huff off and slam the door, switch on the television and sink grumpily into your chair, popping the top off your beer and finding again, like the slob you are, another reason not to shake it all up. What I'm saying is, getting out your vacuum and your dust brush and your gym suit and Whatever else it is you need to clean up your act requires a different approach to the one you've been striving to emulate. Because beneath every intent is a suspicious, primal, anti-intent. This is like someone planting seeds being followed by another person pouring acid water on the earth. So if you're nervously repeating, I'm an abundant person, I have loads of money, and your situation is one of desperate debt, well, what you're really throwing out there in the great energetic playing field is, holy crap, I need money and I need it now. I got bills to pay, my life is rubbish, and unless I hook some goddamn abundance quick smart, I'm really going down. And, you know, hey presto, being the magnet and mirror that you are, you've set your true intent, an attitude of panic about as far from abundance as you can get. And that attitude is exactly the shit that's coming your way more of what you don't want. So I advocate doing the only thing a sane, calm, and sensible person wanting to live the life that he or she, or he, she, if that's your positioning, desires. The only thing you should do in order to move through all the energetic landmines planted around you is get a vacuum, plug it in, and with cool curiosity, start looking at those nooks and crannies you've never noticed before or in some cases the disgustingly massive spunk smeared arenas your dinner guests have thankfully never seen due to the flickering glow of dim romantic candlelight. And imagining your place is who you are, and it is, get down to it. The identifying of ourselves as our homes, our offices, or where we are as who we are, or whatever, is the very identification us slobs have been struggling with, and giving up on, with ourselves as the universe. Now, if you think this is preposterous, gimmicky rubbish, 
then think again. If we are the universe, or Allah, or the Almighty enlightened everything, then we are just as equally, and in fact due to our immediate senses, more identifiably that dark patch of unsucked, loveless molecules stuck in the corner of our living room. That unseen smear of barf on the underseat of the toilet from last month's frat party. The yellowing grease and dust covered Tupperware containers in the darkest recesses of Our Lazy Susan. The unexplained brownish stain on the ceiling in the hallway as we are our own selves. Get it? <laughs>